All right, so now we're going to uh, learn the negative angle identities. Again, there are six of them, one for each trigonometric function, okay? I want you to put those up here in this box. So we're going to call these the negative angle the negative angle identities, there are six of them, okay? All right, what is a negative angle? Okay, well, we've been doing, you know, hey, what is sine of theta, right? Well, it, if theta is an angle, its negative angle is negative theta, right? So if theta is pi over 3, then negative theta is negative pi over 3. Oops, excuse me, pi over 3. Sorry about that is negative pi over 3. It is simply, uh, to get a negative angle, you just simply multiply the angle by negative 1, okay? So if I have the angle, um, you know, 14 pi over, uh, over 2, well, that would be 7 pi, hang on. Uh, let's say uh, uh, 15 pi over 4, to get the negative angle, we just multiply that by negative 1. Okay, so negative 15 pi over 4 would be the negative angle. Now we can also get a negative angle of an angle that's already negative. So let's say that we have an angle, let's say we have negative uh, 5 pi over 6. Well, the negative angle to fi negative 5 pi over 6, multiply it by negative 1, and we get 5 pi over 6. So what we're dealing with here, when we say negative angle, we mean that instead of theta, we have negative theta, okay? Uh, so, um, so the first negative angle identity is going to be sine of negative theta, okay? So this is an idea, or an identity, um, where if we have the sine of an angle, but instead it's not sine of theta, it's sine of negative theta. Well, did you know that sine of negative theta is related to sine of theta? Now, don't finish writing this in there. I'm going to change this in just a second, okay? But I'm, I want to give you an idea. Sine of negative theta is related to sine of theta, right? So let's say that theta, let's say that our angle measure is, um, is pi over 4, okay? Pi over 4. Well, what is sine of pi over 4? Well, we know that sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. All right, now let's do the negative angle. What is sine of negative pi over 4? Well, sine of negative pi over 4, if you're on the unit circle, let's remember, okay, that pi over 4 is up here. But if, if this is our starting place, this is our initial side right here, to go to negative pi over 4, we have to go backwards. We have to do our angle this direction, right? And so our terminal side is going to go backwards, and here's negative pi over 4 because we went backwards, right? We went, we went clockwise instead of counterclockwise, okay? Well, we know that, um, that uh, sine of negative pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2, right? Because the y value is negative. So sine of negative pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. So do you notice how when the angle became negative, the value of sine also became negative, right? And therefore, sine of the negative angle is going to be equal to the negative of whatever sine is, okay? And so here's your first identity. It is. Actually, let me make that. That's too large, I think. Sine of, of negative theta is always going to be equal to the negative of whatever sine of theta is, okay? Um, and so now if you ever have a situation where you're like, oh, man, here in my formula, I have sine of negative x. That negative x is really annoying. I wish it was a positive x. Wouldn't it be so cool if this said positive x? Well, what you can do is you can just take that out, take that part out, and put in a negative sine of positive x. Because negative sine of positive x is the same thing as positive sine of negative x. Okay? It's an identity. It's helpful for changing up your equation or changing up uh, your, your formula so that you can move further, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to identify the other five. We're going to identify what is cosine of negative theta, what is tangent 
of negative theta. What is cotangent of negative theta? What is secant of negative theta? And what is cosecant of negative theta? So in all six of these, we have all six trig functions, and each one, instead of having a normal theta as the angle, they all say negative theta. That's why they're called negative angle identities. Okay? Now, cosine is really cool, because whether you plug in a positive angle, the positive version of the angle or the negative version of the angle, you always get the same thing as whatever cosine of theta is. So let's stick with uh, pi over 4. We know that cosine... Or actually, let's do uh, pi over 6. We know that cosine of pi over 6 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Well, what if we did cosine of negative pi over 6, right? So we did the negative angle. Well, that's in the fourth quadrant, right? We just did this. Pi over 6 is right here. And we know that cosine is square root of 3 over 2. Well, down here is negative pi over 6. Well, we know the cosine in the fourth quadrant is the same as the cosine in the first quadrant. It's still positive square root of 3 over 2. And so therefore, cosine of the positive angle is the same thing as the cosine of the negative angle. And so the cosine of negative theta is always going to be equal to cosine of theta. So anytime you see in a formula, if you see cosine of negative theta, and you're like, oh man, I wish that cosine of negative theta wasn't there. I wish that negative theta was a positive theta. Well, for cosine, you can just swap out cosine of negative theta for cosine of theta. And then that makes your job a little bit easier. Okay. All right, what about tangent? Well, here's the interesting thing about tangent, right? Tangent, remember we just learned that tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. Go back to your basic identities. Well, then that means that tangent of negative theta is going to be equal to sine of negative theta over cosine of negative theta, right? And that means, now we, already, we just learned the identities for sine of negative theta and cosine of negative theta. We know that cosine of negative theta just becomes cosine of theta, positive, right? And sine of negative theta becomes a negative value, negative sine of theta. And because, both of the, because we have a negative divided by a positive, we know that this would then equal, since sine over cosine is tangent, but now it's negative sine, uh, a negative divided by a positive is equal to a negative. So this would be negative. So we're going to take the negative 1 out. Negative 1 times sine of theta over cosine of theta. And we know that sine over cosine is tangent. So negative 1 times tangent is negative tangent. So tangent of negative theta is going to be the same thing as negative tangent of theta. Now, the exact same thing is going to happen in cotangent. Why? Because cotangent is just the reciprocal of all these, right? So cotangent of negative theta is now going to become all the way over here. This is going to go on the bottom. This is going to go on the top. It's going to be cosine of theta over negative sine of theta. Still, now it's a positive divided by a negative, which is still negative. So it's going to be negative cotangent of theta. Now, for secant... Secant is based on cosine, right? Secant is the same thing. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta. Go back to your basic uh, identities. And since cosine doesn't change, cosine of negative theta still is, pos is still positive cosine of theta. Same exact thing is going to happen here. Secant of negative theta is going to become secant of po uh, positive theta, just secant of theta, all right? And then cosecant is related to sine. And because sine changed from sine to negative sine, cosecant of negative theta is going to become negative cosecant of theta. Okay? And these are your six... Oops, sorry, I messed that up. These are your six um, negative angle identities. Okay? All right. Now we're going to move on to the last couple of categories are a little more complicated than what we've seen in these first four. Uh, so so you're pro it's going to be a little harder to memorize those. Uh, what I would do at this point is I would go ahead and see if you can write down all six of these, all three of these, all six of these, and all six of these without looking, okay, so that they are stuck in your brain. And then while we go over what's going to go in here and in here, 
we're actually going to use the previous identities, especially the Pythagorean identities, to help us understand. Okay? All right. And what we're going on to now, the next set, is called the sum and difference identities.